Hey, I'm Lauren from tastypc.tv. Today I'm going to be taking a really quick look around Fractile Design's Arc Mini case. Now, I know there are already loads of video reviews out there for this case, but I plan to do some work to this system in a future video and thought that a really good place to start would be by reviewing the case. So, I have actually owned this computer for quite a while now and I've lost some of the parts to it, so I'm not going to be able to show you those, so sorry about that. Also, when I take you for a look around the case, um, there will already be a system inside it. So, I sh another thing I should also mention is before I started doing this video, what I lost on my studio lights, and I thought it'd be quite a few days until money ones turned up, so I thought I'll just make this video now anyway. But then this morning, my new my new light came up, and I'm just about to make a video, so I thought while I'm here, I'll quickly redo the introduction, the conclusion, and any other bits where it was really difficult to see because of lighting. So this video has been filmed out of sequence and I'm sorry if it's a bit choppy, like places where it's a bit light and darker, I'm sorry. I try my best to make it work. Um, so I'm going to bring the camera over and show you around the case. So starting at the top of the case, we've got the Fractal Design logo. Uh, the case is made of plastic, but it's got this really nice brushed aluminium finish. Although I should mention that the case is a complete fingerprint magnet. And I have spent ages trying to get it clean, but it does still look a bit dirty um, because of how easily it um, picks up dust. So you've got two 5.25 inch optical base and um, fractal design include a 3.5 inch adapter. To take off the front panel, you simply pull from the bottom, it just comes straight off. Now you've got a dust filter space to fit two 120 millimeter fans and you've also got these um clips instead of screws which i actually quite like so now i'm gonna show you the top of the case okay so first we have the reset button a microphone and headphone jacks the power button two usb 2 ports and a usb 3 port so the top panel and the side panels come off really easily they've just got these removable thumb screws um, at the back here, although I would remove them for ease, <laughs> well, <laughs> I've actually lost them. Um, so then it just, once you've got the screws on down, it just slides off really easy. So it has a dust filter, which is this um, like velcro y texture, and my personal preference is I actually prefer this to the normal standard type of dust fillers, and it's actually the same type as used on the front panel. Um, so you've got space to fit either two 120mm or two 140mm fans and you can also fit a 240mm radiator. Now one of the things I really love about this case is that the mounts aren't actually centred and this means that when fitting the radiator you don't have to worry about clearance and motherboard, although you do still have height restrictions from memory. So now I'm going to turn the case around and show you the back. So, taking a look at the back of the case, we've got two grommeted water cooling holes, space to fit 120mm fan, four PCI expansion slots, and a fifth one, which you can use to fit a fan controller, and um, fact, other side actually include one with the case, and then you've just got um, a hole to mount a power supply. So, I'm going to lay the case down on its side and show you the bottom. So taking a look at the bottom, we've got this wire dust filter and it's really easy to remove, just slide straight out, you can slide it straight back in. We've also got these really sexy feet with rubber bottoms and this helps stop vibrations and it also makes you less likely to scratch or damage your desk. So if we take a look at the side panel, so looking at the side panel, we've got space to mount either 120mm or 140mm fan. Um, now I do prefer cases with um, windowed side panels and without fan mounts, but I know a lot of people prefer their cases like this. So removing the side panel is just as easy as removing the top panel. You've got little thumb screws at the end, which I've lost, that you just unscrew and it just slides straight off. So what I'm going to do now is turn off the camera, move the light around so you can see um, inside the case properly, and then show you around the inside of the case. So looking around the inside of the case, we can see that it supports micro ATX motherboards. Um, we've got the two 5.25 inch optical base that I mentioned, and two hard drive cages um, with six removable hard drive trays. 
So to remove them, you just squeeze this bit and it pulls straight out and slides straight back in. And I would show you, but I've got all my hard drives already connected. Um, so these can support either 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch hard drives or solid states. One thing that I did notice is when, when you are taking these out and putting them back in, it does leave white paint on the inside of the cage. Although when the tray's in you can't see, so it doesn't really matter. So this top cage is removable, um, you can take it straight out, or you can actually take it out and put it in this way. And some people would prefer to do that because it better directs the airflow from the front of the case to the graphics cards. So the bottom of the case we've got 120mm fan although that I did notice that you'd have to forfeit this fan if you wanted to use a power supply 170mm or longer. Um, I also noticed that if you were to turn it upside down then the cables would actually be in the way stopping me from being able to fit the bottom fan. So in the case you can fit graphics cards up to 260mm long although if you remove this cage you could actually fit them up to 400mm long although then you could only use um, graphics cards two slots wide if you, you couldn't use um, three slot wide ones like the Asus Matrix I use in my C70 rig so one thing that really did annoy me about this case is the quality of the grommets around the cable management holes I mean as you can see some are still there but um, when I was pushing the cables through, some did fall out and they were so flimsy I couldn't get them back in and I ended up just having to cut them out. I mean, I've got one here. Um, so I didn't like that about the case. Um, you can fit a CPU cooler up to 165mm big. So fractal design say that you can fit a 70mm radiator depending on what motherboard, memory and um, CPU water block you use. Although personally I'd recommend using radiator 40mm or smaller. Um, I should also mention that if you do fit a radiator you do have to forfeit this side fan. I mean I'm using a really really slim fan here. Um, I would have to say I think that H100s are perfect for this case. Although if you, want, if you did want to drill this bottom cage out you could fit a radiator here. Um, now, when I originally got the case, it came with three fans, a 120mm one in the front here, a 120mm one in the rear, and a 140mm one up here. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is turn the case around and show you the inside of the back. So, looking at the back of the case, as you can see my really awful cable management. Um, now, I did leave some extra PCIe connectors, just in case I ever decide to do SLI in the future. Um, so as you can tell I've already removed the back side panel which was just plain. It slid straight off as easily as the top panel on the other side panel. It's just that um, I thought it would be easy to remove first because of having to try and get the light so that you can see properly. So I did notice that because of the size of the case there's not a lot of room for cable management and if you're using thicker cables like this you can't have them overlap um, and when putting on the side panel you'd have to do it with a little bit of force although you do have plenty of room behind the back of the hard drives for cables. Um, you've also got lots of these things for cable ties, which I love. Um, now, the CPU backplate cutout it is actually too high for my motherboard, and I did have to remove it to fit the H100. Um, I think Fractile Design could have probably done with just making this a little bit bigger. So hopefully I covered everything, so now I'm going to move on to the conclusion. So. Giving this case an award, firstly, I would have preferred this case to have a side panel with a window, but this is a non-windowed case and it had been really unfair of me to mark this case down due to the fact that it doesn't have a windowed side panel. However, it would have been quite nice if Fractile Design had given you the option of choosing a side panel with a window. Um, with the grommets, I think you should either do them right or not do them at all, but saying that, this, this case is only £60 and it's unfair to compare the quality of the grommets against more expensive cases that I own. Um, with a case this good value for money, you had to lose some quality from somewhere. Now this case does scratch really easily and is a complete fingerprint magnet, but on the other hand, it's one of the few MATX cases that can actually um, support H100 and water cooling. Um, and I think that because of the plain side panel and the fact that you can drill out the bottom hard drive, it, this case could potentially be a modest dream and I think with a bit of work you could create a really sexy little powerhouse. 
Um, so I'm going to have to give this case a 5 star gold award. Now, I would also give it the value award, but um, I'm currently working with a graphics designer to try and rethink my award system. And once I've done that, I'm going to go back over all the components I've reviewed and re-award them. Um, and when I do that, this case will get both the gold and value award. So I'm really sorry about the lighting. I hope you liked the review. Um, if you did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.